Hey everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. In today's video, we're gonna have a look at the patch replace tool, and I'm gonna show you a really neat trick that will save you time. Let's go. Okay, so we're inside DaVinci Resolve 18.5, and you can see that we have a colored circle against a colored backdrop. And this physical circle is just hung up by two wires. Now, the client wants to remove these wires and the default tool that you guys might already be familiar with is the patch replace tool. So if I search patch replacer in the effects and drag it on to my clip, we'll get a source patch and a target patch appear on our screen. Now, if you can't see these, go to the bottom left-hand corner and make sure that our open effect overlay is on. These shapes and the method in which Resolve is generating the clone can be tweaked up in these main tools here. So the region shape can be changed from an ellipse to a rectangle. In this scenario, I'm actually going to show you how to use the alpha channel, but we'll get into that in a little bit. You can see currently our blend clone fill-in method is generating quite a lot of fuzzy edges and it's not looking that great. So what I'm going to do is change it from blend clone to clone which as you can see, really cleans up that selection. What Blend Clone is doing is it's a little bit more intelligent. It analyzes what's behind the target patch and tries to blend it in a little bit more intelligently. But in our case, for this shot, it'll just messy things up. So we want to keep it simple and just use the clone. The replacement detail slider allows us to blend back that detail. And in the details sub panel, we can go ahead and blur the selection out and change the border type. Another great thing to mention, which I haven't been utilizing as much as I should have, um, these on-screen controls are really useful. I'm just going to go ahead and reduce my blur edge. Um, I can hide these entirely. This is really useful if I want to analyze my finished result. Also, what I can do is I can click the auto-hide feature. So that means when I move either the source or the target patch, they'll actually vanish so I can get a better indication of the final result while I'm moving it around. And if I release the mouse, you can see our controls spring back. So auto hide is a really useful tool. For now, we'll leave it on show. Now, if I wanna get rid of these wires up the top, what I'd do is I'd move my source patch over to the green background, and I'd move my target patch to hide these wires. I can hit hide to see my result. You can see a little bit of edging, so I'm gonna blur the edges a little. I'm just gonna zoom in on this so you guys can see. Cool, so that's giving a nice blur. The wire is still a little bit visible, but that could be okay, that could be possible. But there's a better way of doing this particular removal. So I'm going to go ahead and change my region shape to alpha channel. And I'm just gonna put my blur edges all the way back to zero. Now in order for this alpha channel region shape to take effect, I need to create a mat. So I'm gonna go to my shape, get my pen tool out, and I'm just gonna draw a precise shape across. And you can see when I complete that shape, we are seeing a result. Now if I go ahead and select my open effect overlay, you can see that in a very similar vein we have a source and a destination. So if I go ahead and fiddle with our target and our source patch, you can see that now we've got a much cleaner result. So again I'm just going to go here, turn this off and really zoom in. You can see we've got a little bit of edging here. So we're going to go ahead and just increase our blur edges just a little. Now, unfortunately, because of the background, uh, we are going to get a little bit of wire spill if we blur the edges enough to blend the gradient. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put blend edges down significantly. I'm going to go to my power window, tweak this. Okay, so that's a pretty clean edge along there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an additional node. I'm just going to create two little shapes. One here. And one here. I'm just going to go ahead and lessen this midtone detail. Just going to go ahead and hide my outlines while I adjust this midtone detail. And again, we're really looking at this line here and just blurring that off. And there we go. We'll label this midtone detail and we'll label this patch replace. So moving on to our next shot, we've got a very similar shot to set up here. So I'm going to go ahead, drag my patch replacer, line up my source and target patch, change that to clone, change my region shape to alpha, and go ahead 
and create my shape. A little bit of softness, a little bit of blur edge, removing that. And that's looking pretty good. Again, might just add, and you know, I can be pretty, pretty broad with this. I could just add another shape like this, really soften this out and just decrease that midtone detail. That's really just evening out these edges here. But there we have it. That is a really neat trick for the patch replacer tool using this alpha channel mode. And again, I haven't actually tested this out, but you can see here that we could probably feed an additional mask instead of actually having the shape contained within this corrector node. If there's another mat or mask, we could actually feed it into the patch replacer tool to give us a really specific mat. And that's it everyone. Hope you enjoyed that quick tutorial. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.